This is the first of several maths casts in which I'm intending to investigate the Fourier transforms of some simple functions. The first such function I'm going to deal with is the function f of t, which takes the value 0 for almost all t, but jumps to a value 1 just for a very small part of the domain, from t equals 0 to t equals a. Let's write down a rule for that function. It's going to have to be expressed in piecewise form. It looks like this. Let's also do a graph for this function to get a picture of what it looks like. You see it comes in from the left, jumps up to 1 for a little while, and then drops back again to the value 0 and continues that way. Next we need to write down the definition of a Fourier transform. The Fourier transform involves integrating f of t with a special kind of exponential with integration variable t. However, in the exponential there is a new variable which we will use the Greek letter omega for. It looks like this. Since t is now the integration variable, by the time we've put in the limits, the function overall will be a function of the letter omega. This transform looks a little bit like the Laplace transform, doesn't it? But notice the differences. First of all, in the integration range, the Laplace transform only integrates from 0 to infinity. Also, in that exponential, in the Fourier transform, the exponential contains an imaginary argument. It's got a j in it. Remember, j squared is negative 1. To get further, we have to substitute the specific functional form for our f of t. I've scrolled it away now, but I think we can see just by looking at the graph. It's 0 everywhere except between 0 and a. That means that this integral will have only a contribution from the value 0 up to the value a for the integration variable. In that range of the integration variable, the value f of t will just be 1. So we can write something like the following. The integral is now very easy to do. Don't be upset by the presence of an imaginary unit j in that exponential. It's still just an exponential and we'd integrate it in exactly the same way as we always would. We get the same exponential divided by the coefficient of t which is here, negative j omega. All that remains is to put in the upper and lower integration limits and do the subtraction. Remember, e to the 0 is 1, so we get the following. That's pretty much it, really. There's one minor simplification we might make, and that's to recognize that 1 over negative j is the same as positive j on top. This is perfectly good as a final answer. But there are a couple of forms that sometimes people might prefer to write it as. We could take that exponential and write it using Euler's formulae as a cos and a j sign, as follows. Then we could expand out the brackets and absorb the j. We'll then be able to see the real and the imaginary parts explicitly. So there's a second form for the answer. It's no better or worse than the first form. It just might be more convenient in some contexts. There's one other thing we can do with this answer. Let's go back to the original form and rewrite it in a different way. I'm going to pull out of the bracket as a factor an exponential with exactly half the argument that we see here. So minus a half j omega a. Next I'm going to put the j back underneath with a minus sign but then I'm going to pick up that minus sign and take it into the brackets and reverse the order of the exponentials there. The 1 over j times the thing in brackets here is almost the Euler result for sine of omega a over 2. All it needs is a half at the front. So I'm now going to put that half in and take it out again somewhere else. Voila! Now, 1 over 2j times the difference of exponentials in the bracket is exactly a sine of omega a over 2. So we get our final result as follows. This is a third form for the answer, which also occasionally has its uses. I'm going to leave it there.